Hello everyone, Salty Head here in another adventure. Today we're going to be heading up to the great state of New Hampshire, up to Portsmouth, and we're going to be going to this place called Strawberry Banks, which is a quaint little historical village which was preserved over the, over 300 years. And so we're going, going back in time and we're going to visit these little homes and see what they look like back when the first settlers came to New England. Well, you're ready to take a trip into the past? Well, we're here and uh, let's go check it out. And you can tell it's, it's not that busy. In fact, today is the first day they're open for the year on May 1st. So we got our tickets, they're $17 a piece. So now we're gonna go out and check out this beautiful historical park. All right, look at this, old houses. So we're going back in time here to the 1700s. Look at that. Oh, honey, look at that. Oh, they got a pea pot. Look at that. I could use one of those, middle of night. <laughs> Get up and go pee. All right, yeah, this is, talk about a plush bed, huh? Look at that. And over here, you got your little cooking station. Oh, I love these hearths. They're beautiful. Look at that. So these structures have all been restored to their period and the same colors they used back in the day. And here we go, 1750. So here's an older house. We got some old logs here. These, I don't know what the story is here, but they're hollowed out. So what we do have here is uh, this is white pine, and this is what they used back in the day to build water pipes. And um, white pine was the type of tree they preferred. And they just took an auger and they drilled through it. And you get these pipes that they use for aqueducts throughout the city of Portsmouth. Because Portsmouth is actually, it's at the lowest elevation. So there's a lot of concern about sea rise and whether or not this will be here for another, you know, 100 years. And, um, but back in the day, this is how they moved water throughout the uh, city. And here we have some nice gardens here. This is, um, I always love this stuff. This is rhubarb, and I love rhubarb. Very, very bitter, you know, very, uh, yeah, it's great. It's making pies and stuff. But this is just the beginnings here in the springtime. Okay, so here's where we uh, dry all the herbs. As you can see, uh, these are probably from last fall. And I know this is uh, goldenrod. I don't know what they use goldenrod for, but... And then some berries here and... Oh, is it this the real one, honey? Yeah, it's all real. But anyways, yeah, and they take here and they, they grind it up and they make... I don't know, they grind up the herbs, that's all. And this little grinding machine. Look at that. Early American ingenuity at its best. Don't put your hand in there. No. Yeah. Yeah, it comes out the bottom. Uh, that's how you make uh, hamster fodder for hamster, um, the hamsters <laughs> and rabbits. <laughs> that's the fodder they use for going to the bathroom. The privy. Okay. All right. So there we go. You have to go. You have to go back in the day. You just sit yourself right on that little thing, and see you can be, you can sit there, and your wife can sit next to you, 
You can have a conversation. Oh my God. I just wanted to point out something real quick. This gentleman here who lived in this house, he lived to be 104 years old. And it. And the other day I was in a graveyard. This was in, um, in Provincetown, Massachusetts. And I noticed there were a lot of people that lived to be in their 90s and 100. And they always talk about modern medicine keeping us alive longer. Well, I wonder if because of the fact that people ate a lot of organic food back then, they lived just as long as we're living with modern medicine. So just something I noticed that I, when I start looking at these things, because it's all, you know, it's in writing, it's on the stones uh, as to how old these people used to live. You know, some used to die because of disease and so forth, but people did live a long time back in the uh, 17th and 1800s also. Here's 1790, look down this road. This is what you would have seen without the flags. Oh my God. This is just the old main street of, uh, and did I call this Portsmouth back then or was it, it, was, it was called Putty, Bank. It was Putty Bank? Bank originally. It's Strawberry Bank? That's the name of 1630. And what about Putty Dock? Puddle Dock. Puddle Dock. Yeah. That, that just developed that name and when the when the first sailors sailed into here in 1630 yeah they named the place strawberry bank because there were wild strawberries growing on both banks of the river okay so because of the strawberries they got the name for this area yep. yeah and this was this was the beginning of course with 1630. wow look at that this is this is original street folks this is what it looked like back then I love the colors of these houses, huh? It must be the mansion. They had oysters, a little chicken, looks like ham, cheese, oranges. And they did, really did a good job at replicating the period to which this house was built. And this would be considered one of the mansions back in the day. This would be the formal room. I think they call this the drawing room with the piano and or the music room. You know, you just come back and have your tea or coffee and just sit and relax and talk. Yeah, that's a nice looking bed, huh? Huh? Oh, look, they got a toilet in their bedroom. <laughs> oh my God, these guys, these guys didn't want to go far from their bed, probably because it was so cold at night. And yeah, right in your own bedroom, you got a toilet. And then over here, see, we have another pea pot. So yeah, and I'm not sure. Oh, that's to wash your feet. Do you see it? This thing here. So you sit by the fire and you put your foot in the in the little butt basin and without taking a shower. Well, no, your feet are all, you know, from walking around in mud all day. Because they didn't have paved roads, but yeah, it's probably what they did. And I'm also doing a lot of speculating, because I don't know for sure, but but this is, uh, would make sense to me. I mean, what else could they do with that thing? Good question. If anybody out there knows what that's for, let me know down below. The yeah, so anyways, notice how Anna's right there. And Anna's, uh, what, you're five feet tall, Anna? And she can reach the ceiling. So all the ceilings back in the day were very low. And um, this is probably to conserve energy, to heat. And here we have some violets. And the flowers are just coming out. We got dandelions. Isn't that beautiful? I love the purple violets. So this is a cherry tree and it's just beginning to bloom now. And uh, yeah, it's beautiful. Another week and these things will be in full bloom. And behind it, you can see this beautiful flowering tree. Look at that. Here in Portsmouth, May 1st, 2022. This is where we're at. So now we're walk, walking down Main Street here, the Strawberry Bank. And there aren't that many people here today. It's actually, we got the place kind of to ourselves. There's no lines. We just go in into every building and check it out. And there's nobody really uh, in front of us or behind us. 
And these are the gardens, just the beginning, springtime. And you got the hyacinth that's already in bloom. Iris is coming up. Some nice big trees here. And I have to say, you really feel like you're stepping back in time. Everything is in period. And they've done a really good job of preserving all this. It's a little uh, sitting area. So where are we? So we're at the Shapiro house. It was built in 1795, but it wasn't, um, but it, someone else lived there. But in 1919, the Shapiro family lived here with their 10 year old daughter, Molly. Um, Sarah and Abraham Shapiro both came from Ukraine. Yeah. Um, but they didn't know each other when they lived there. They met when we they came to Puddle Dock, and yeah. then they had their daughter. And this will show kind of what the house would have looked like at that time. Okay, great. And it, were the Shapiros they were just well-to-do people? Um, so they were pretty successful. So they did have a good size house um, and it was a lot more modern than lots of the houses around the area. Yeah. Um, uh, Mr. Shapiro actually ended up being someone who worked really hard to get the um, uh, Temple Israel okay. um, open and he had a big part in that. So they were a pretty um, affluent. Yeah couple yeah and they also had their daughter you can see that she, if you look in her room she has toys she was an only child so she yeah. did get like if she for instance she had a piano that she learned piano on in there and so they did have funds and they didn't spoil molly but she did have the things that she needed and she went to both public school and hebrew school right here in portsmouth all right so this is the shapiro's house and they, got, they actually have plumbing in this. Because now we're in, she said, 1900s. So there's plumbing, there's a fan. 1919. See the calendar? Oops. See the calendar up here? So that was 1919. And that's the cool thing about Strawberry Banks. It actually takes us through time. And you see how people actually lived in that period. And you see they got the wood stove, I mean the uh, cast iron stove for cooking and coal to keep the uh, fire hot. More dried vegetables and fruits. Colorful. So I think as, you know, we as a, people in the 20th, first century, we can relate because it's, you know, everything's more modernized but they still had the same things like the sewing machine and lighting. I don't know if they had lighting back then, but maybe kerosene or whale oil or something, but they had coffee, and tea. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Old paintings. Piano for entertainment, very nice. It's just uh, so well presented here. This is why I like Strawberry Bank. I've been here, I came here many, many years ago, like 25 years ago. And I have to say, it's just a total uh, representation of the time. You can come here and you can feel like, wow, this is what people did back then. There's an old phonograph. When do you crank, you see that? So you crank it, because everything we have is electric now, but, and then the record spun and it played music out of this box. Yes, my father has one. Isn't that cool? So here we have a nice herb garden. Well, this place, and just so you know, this place is big, it's 10 acres. This guy said it would take probably two days just to see this whole thing. Yeah, uh, 10 acres. Uh, Anna, this way. So yeah, you could spend easily a day if you're moving, but if you try to read everything, it could take two days. Yeah, that's an apple tree, I think. That's yeah. apple tree? Yeah, it's an apple tree. It's just been pruned like that. Those are, uh, these are hydrangeas. Hydrangeas, okay. 
Oh, look at the painting. Yeah, it's like a Monet. Isn't that nice? Oh, really nice. Yeah. More dried flowers. Look at that. So herbs were very important back in the day. And that's how they healed illnesses. And they traded with the East because they had a lot of remedies. It came from these herbs. And over here, in this cabinet here, they had things for the stomach. Um, things like licorice, licorice powder. And back in the day, this is what they used. Witch hazel salve to protect the skin, and treat cuts and burns and rashes. Mm -hmm. All right, so now, oh, look at this. I think they have a grant, like I think the state of Massachusetts. Oh, I love this shit. Yeah, beautiful models. And this is what Portsmouth was all about, you know, ships and trade and, and slavery and whatever else you transport on sailing vessels. But they went all around the world bringing lumber and cotton and, and that sort of thing to trade with. Oh, that's why I wonder why now, I, I love it. Now my this first, ship is from Hong Kong. That's my where, first sight, you know. This is where Anna's from. Look at the frame on this thing. Yeah. Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Well, that's why I said they traded from around the world. Yeah. I have to say, I've been to the Peabody Essex Museum and I like Strawberry Banks actually better. Um, yeah, I think it's more, it offers more. The builders choose. Okay, so here we go. Here's what they use to make the homes. All your tools, your chisels, your planes, and your saws. Yeah, I love looking up at the at the ceilings and seeing the old hand hewn beams and stuff. Look at that. What do you look up there? Isn't that cool? Oh made a long time ago and there's a horseshoe up there. Look at that. Somebody stuck that up there for good luck. Probably, right? Except it's facing down. So I was just informed that the horseshoe, in order to bring good luck, it should be going upwards, not downwards. To hold in the luck. So here we are at the general store. Let's go in here. It says, uh, m and Brad's a grocery store back in the day. All right, great, thanks. So here we have, this is the, uh, the general the store. store. No, it's the Abbott Little Corner Store, neighborhood store. Okay, so they... Oh, oh this is, I thought they had the real store we can buy some food. Oh, yeah. oh It's old. In 1943, you could. Oh, <laughs> yeah. this is 1943. Mm. 1940, wow. Yeah. Look at that, so this is what you could buy in a, in a, uh -huh. yeah. in a store. A store. Oh yeah, remember the old Campbell soup cans? Yeah. yeah. They, they tried changing the style, but they made them change it back because people were so yeah, used Yeah, people to used to that. I still, I still this day, I still have the tomato soup. Whenever yeah. I get sick, I love the tomato soup. <laughs> Without Ritz crackers or uh, yeah, saltine get, crackers, you can't beat it. You get better real quick. You need a biscuit. Yeah. Okay. You, have, you need a biscuit. You have, you need a, I haven't yeah. seen those for a while. Uh, yeah, see that? This is all the things back in the 1940s, she said. Yeah. Oh, honey, see how much you pay for it. Oh, yeah, the prices are on there, too. Yeah. So, nine cents. And the ration stamp prices. Yeah, 17 cents points. for a you can of Del Monte points. sweet corn. You need to have stamps to buy those. Yeah. And three cans of Campbell's soup for 25 cents. Yeah. Wow. And there's your uh, cornflakes. I recognize a lot. I was a child Isn't this cool though, like going back in time? 
and somebody preserved all the stuff. Mm. Cut right as your wax paper. And I don't know what that is. Oh, that's a toilet paper. Yeah. Wow. The brands are the same. Black paper. Yeah. Look up there, it's Cheerios. Yeah, one grape one. nuts. Cheerios, because I guess Red was back then the too. And oh, these companies, a lot of these companies are all still with us. Spick and Span. Yeah, oh, I see least, that. At least the brand names are. Yeah. Coca Cola has been with us forever. Yeah. Oh, rationing. Yeah. So they had rationing. We're going to have that in the future, I think. Well, this is World War II specific. So here we have the organic garden, complete with chickens, hens. For fresh eggs. Wow, this is old, huh? Look at this. Uh, talk about 1790? Yeah. yeah. Talk about lead paint. <laughs> There's a lot of lead paint here. Honey, that could be the original house. Look, look at the wall. Joshua Jackson house. Yeah, that's. Oh, <sighs> they don't have insulation. Oh yeah, no, it's, there's no insulation back then. It was just that plaster. Hey, you're right, no insulation. But this is uh, this is what it was like back then. Low ceilings, and lots of lead paint, and lots of lath. Oops. Now, we're actually in a duplex. And here we got a black and white TV. And this house was built in the 50s. Yeah, so they would have had that one. That's a 27-inch screen. Yeah. That's 1954 General Electric. That would have been enormously expensive. This particular TV. thousand dollars, yes. Wow. Yeah. That, so, uh, what they had, was they had the first TV in the neighborhood. Yeah. But that was a very modest zenith. Yeah. With a round screen, but they're difficult to come by. So we may do with this. And that. we're using a CD player and showing some of the videos of the 1950s on it. Wow, look at that. That's George Burns and Gracie Allen, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Remember the balsa? The balsa planes, guys? Yes, I hated them because I, they the kept yo breaking or splitting on me. And the yo-yo. And here's the kitchen here with the stove. And I'm, always, I'm looking for things that I knew as I grew up. Yeah, those little cans of spices and the, the fresh eggs. And the refrigerator was just a cooler. And back there's the old, that's the wash, no, no not a wash machine, but that actually dries the clothes. You roll them through there, I think. Or maybe you wash them and then roll them. I remember that. And there's some baseball cards from back in the day. Frost and Red Sox, the old radio. I think I remember a radio like that. Oz was red. And this is the, uh, the little pantry, I guess. And we had one of these things too, by the way. Grew up with that. Friarly thing. Oh, look at that sheep, huh? Look at that. Hi, sheep. Look at that, huh? They're all, all sheared. Those are called, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, what is that? Uh oh, I don't know what he did wrong. Why, why, yeah, why, why he Oh, he's, he's getting them sheared. He's gonna share them. Ba ba black sheep, have you any wool? Yes sir, yes sir, three bags full. One for the master, one for the dame, one for the little boy that lived down the lane. Ba ba black sheep, have you any wool? Yes sir, yes sir, three bags full. Well, you guys inspired me to sing.
So we just walked around Strawberry Banks. It was fantastic. We saw a lot of history. We saw how people lived throughout the uh, three centuries, all the way back to the 1700s. Very interesting. And the people that are here, they speak to you in periods. So it's very interesting. There's so much to see. I would give it a two thumbs up. I would come back anytime. And so your family, your friends get to see what it was like to live here in America in that time. And this area here is, was all formed around the Pasquata River, which runs right out to the ocean. And over the years right here, they call it Puddle Dock. And it's just the name that they created. And that's where they used to bring in the slaves. They used to bring in, because there was a lot of slavery, slavery unfortunately, uh, you know, here and in the South. But, you know, that was just the way it was back then. And they used to do a lot of trading. They used to trade, um, you know, cotton, tobacco, uh, lumber, and they used to bring it to the east and trade for like porcelain and you know all kinds of uh, jewelry and that sort of thing. So it's a very important commercial area here in New England, and um, this just gives you a beautiful demonstration of what it was like. So come here and check it out right here in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and uh, it's great. And this is here is at the uh, right next to Strawberry Banks. It's the, the uh, gardens. And there's not much here yet, but in another couple of weeks, it'll be all tulips and daffodils and annuals, but it's very beautiful. And it's just early. May 1st is just early to be here, but a uh, beautiful day. Doesn't matter to us because we just wanted to come out and see some things. But uh, yeah, you need to come back here when it's uh, the middle of summer and it's very, very beautiful. So right now we're here at the Portsmouth Harbor Inlet. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, what an ending! <laughs> Right now we're walking down Market Street here in Portsmouth. We're looking for a nice restaurant. And we think we found one. It's called the Surf Restaurant. It's got lots of seafood and so we're gonna check it out now. See, it's got good ratings. And um, yeah, there's lots of restaurants, lots of shopping here in Portsmouth. Great town, kinda, kinda, um, like a college town really and it's the only town in new hampshire i think that's on the uh hey guys hey how are you how are you doing good how are you doing it's the only town i think that's on the co uh coast in new hampshire is portsmouth so this is uh they put all their energy here and here in this town hey how are you Great. How you I've doing? been looking for you all this time. <laughs> I know we haven't seen each other for years. I know it's, it's tough. Amazing. It's tough. It's we're getting older too, aren't we? Uh, yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, we can change your role. Hi. Two, please. Two video for dinner. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right now we're looking at about an hour. Yeah. Hey, how are you doing? So we're eating at the River House because the other place had over an hour wait. And we're going to start off with some nice New England seafood chowder. Test it out. See if it's any good. Mm. Not bad. Not bad at all. So Annie got the seafood pasta, and I got the lobster roll. 
After an hour of waiting. <laughs> oh well. Well, we just had a nice meal here at the River House restaurant here in the Piscata River. And we're gonna head back to Boston. I hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, this is Salty Head here in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. And thank you for watching.